our Big Bang for Win SQ annual book campaign entitled Guardrails. Who among us here have had the trouble of forgetting passwords? There were times that you tried and tried until it gets locked out. No, then you found hope after you see this link that says forgot password. And it is meant to, to reset the password and send you a new one. But the problem is you also forgot your email password. No? So big issue, di ba? And now we even have the, the OTP, the 2FA, what's that? We have the fingerprint. We also have that secret question that only you know the secret answer. Di ba? The passwords are so troublesome. And then comes our most favorite, the face ID technology. Yeah. <laughs> Your password is your face, sabi nga. <laughs> Let me tell you my story. One night, you know when you charge your phone pala at night, it will automatically upgrade its OS. So one night, it upgraded the OS, and then the next morning, I put my phone in front of my face, and it's not happening. Wow, problem to. So I thought, maybe it's my new facial hair, my, my new look. The phone is not able to identify. So anyway, maybe I will just reset up and recalibrate the face setting. But even after I did that, I still have that error, face ID disabled. I forgot, I've been using the face ID technology for many years, that I forgot the passwords na. So I have to go to the notes and look for it one by one. The apps have different passwords, so it was so annoying and troublesome. So I went to the iPhone repair shop, and to cut the long story short, I can no longer, uh, the technician says I can no longer use the face ID. Why? Sabi niya, because the old camera hardware is not compatible with the new software. Because the new software will add more test points, especially in the eyes, the, the eyes because we're all wearing face masks. So they have to add new additional security. So when, when he's mentioned the word protection and coverage, okay, medyo I calm down. I know I'm familiar with protection and coverage. I'm sure, you know, I get it. I, I preach it and all this. And you realize that it is not just these mobile companies that are pushing, you know. Have you noticed even the government are pushing so hard for this cybersecurity? You know, because recently uh, we're having all this, uh, especially for the banks and the financial companies, you know. And I've done a little research. Do you know how much it costs for a company to protect itself from like hacking and phishing alone? It's a lot. It's like an average of six million per year per company average. Huh? So if you total, it will be like a 350 billion industry for this cybersecurity. Now, why would the company spend so much on this? Why is the government pushing so hard for the crime prevention of this hacking, phishing, budoling, if there's such a word? Why do they spend so much? Because it mentions also in the report that the cost that this sheer volume of scam and phishing has quadrupled for the past six years, four times, and it amounted to like 14.8 million. So now it makes sense that the value being protected inside the company is nothing compared to the cost of protecting it. You get it? The six million is nothing compared to the 14.8 million and more. And if a hacker was able to come in and steal all these intellectual properties, data assets, and all these uh, trade secrets and everything, it can even bankrupt a company. It makes so much sense why, why it is a top priority for any organization. How about us? Before we came in here, those who are driving, those web cars, if you didn't lock your car, car please raise your hand. Before we came here, we, we locked the doors of our uh, houses and even bought those digital, expensive digital locks, right? You don't just uh, post your password in your Facebook or Instagram. You don't do that. No? You don't share your savings account passcode and all this. Because we protect it. We are serious in protecting it. It's triple, double encrypted. Because we are serious about guarding our business, our land, our properties. We are serious in guarding our finances. We are guarding our relationships. Our marriage, we are guarding our children. But you know, in our verse, in our text today, Proverbs 4.23, it is also the overall theme verse of Four Guardrails. It tells us that more than guarding all these things, we should be guarding our heart. Yes, more than guarding our kids, really? Yes, because what happens in your heart automatically affects them. Yes, automatically. You know, it is a top priority. The writer of the Proverbs says, this is 
on top of everything. So I've entitled our message today, Heart Above All. More than anything else, more than any guarding that you do, you need to guard your heart above all else. Why? Verse 23 says, the answer, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. There you go. That's our answer. Brothers and sisters, as we go through this journey of guardrails, we will realize that everything, even the past mistakes and regrets we have in life, is because we fail to protect our hearts. We fail to guard our hearts. Even the pains and brokenness that we are experiencing right now can be traced back from our past failure in protecting our hearts. You may say, no, 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 Pastor. It's not me. Somebody broke my heart. Somebody. That, that someone, that guy hurt me and betrayed me. No, stop saying that, mga kapatid. Listen to this. Your heart will not be broken if you have not given it. Tama? Your heart will not be broken if you... Uh, have not failed to protect it. You have failed to put guardrails on. But no worries, I have a good news for you, mga kapatid. It's not too late. We can protect it all together from now on. As families, as koinonia, as friends, we can protect each other's heart. So please attend these guardrails to find out how. If there's one big advice, one big lesson that we will all remember in this 2022 book campaign guardrails is that a well-guarded heart protects us from the regrets of life. Yes, it is indeed heart above all. How do we guard our heart? How do we protect? How do we build guardrails? Join a koinonia. You will find out. Please be a member. So seriously, mga kapatid, this is good. This is really good. Every single, single person in here, the Lord has given us one mission, one top mission above all else. That if we fail and if we neglect to do it, it will have a very dramatic implications on other things that flows out of our life. To opo, kung hindi natin to matututunan, kawawa naman ang mga pamilya natin. Asawa, mga anak, regrets, 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 ang resulta. It will create chaos in our own life, home, and community, and even derail us from God's plan and purpose in our lives. A well-guarded heart will protect us from all of these regrets. So if, we, if our priority is to guard our hearts, then what, what is the heart? Of course, by now, you know it is not this organ that is pumping blood throughout our body. No, it's not the physical. It is a metaphor. It is not the physical organ. So what is the metaphor of the heart according to the scripture? Because it gets so confusing no, that you can just give your heart anywhere, everywhere. Now you see a lot of hearts. No? Wow, ang sarap ng pagkain. Pusuan ko nga. Oh, so, so it gets so confusing. So I think for all of us, when we think of the heart, it is just the emotion or the feelings, right? But this is not so. In fact, historically, this is because, this concept is because of the Greeks. It, this actually comes from the Greeks, yes. This is the way they view the heart. The sociologists call it anthropological dualism. It's a big word, but don't bother. It just simply means it's a divided, we are, they look at us as divided person. The two personalities, conflicting, dualism. So when you read the Greeks on this, the, the Greeks describe a person like there is a war between the head and the heart. Sounds familiar, no? You know, in the Philippines, you always you also hear the same. Kapag na broken heart tayo, ang sabi ng mga magulang, kaibigan, di ba? Sa susunod kasi, pus, utak naman gamitin mo, wag naman yung puso lagi, di ba? There is this dualism, no? And sometimes at church, we even teach this, that God created the head over the heart so that the heart will rule, uh, so that the head will rule over the heart. No, but this is not the same as what the Bible is teaching. So from now on, let me correct you on this, brothers and sisters. This concept is from the Greeks, but this is not the way the Bible describes the heart. Okay, in fact, when you search the totality of the scripture, the Bible talks about the heart a lot. It is referenced to like 601 times. Just in Proverbs, is 97 times. Oh, so therefore, it is very important for us to know um, before we start these guardrails and how to protect the heart, then we must understand first, what is the heart? What are we to protect? So we must have the same concept. We must be aligned with the Bible. When the Bible talks about the heart, we have the same. We are in the same page. Okay? It is not the Greek heart. It is not the Filipino heart. It is not the Korean heart, that small, small heart, di ba? It is the biblical heart. It is the way the Bible really describes the heart. So what's the biblical heart? Let me expound it to you into categories so that it's easier to understand. Number one, 
the heart thinks. Well, the heart has this intellectual capacity. The Bible talks about the heart pondering, considering, perceiving, understanding, the heart arguing and debating. No, 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 Pastor Martin, that's the brain. No, no, no. The Bible says it's the heart. So when you read the heart, it has an intellectual capacity. Listen, mga kapatid, in the Bible, as the person, uh, we are looked as one whole being. There's no dualism. One person lang. The central thinking, the processing part of you, metaphorically, your heart thinks, understands, and remembers. So heart has an intellectual capacity. Number two, the heart feels, of course, this one we agree, you know, we experience the joy, the sorrow, the pain, the bitterness, disgust. Proverbs 14.10 says, uh, the Proverbs talks about the heart's anxiety, the heart's despair, of affection, jealousy. All of these are related to what's going inside the heart. So the heart has emotional capacity as well. Num number three, the heart chooses. It has will or volitional capacity. It means the heart decides. The heart can choose for himself. The heart wills. The heart executes a plan of action whether to move forward or backward, left or right. It will set the direction of your life. It's the heart. The free will is in the heart. The capacity to choose. And last but not the least, the heart as a moral capacity. Okay. The Bible describes the heart as holy, faithful, pure, hardened. It can also be described as deceitful, proud, perverse. Jesus said ultimately nothing defies a person but their hearts. You are made corrupted or clean by your heart. So the totality of heart is an intellect, emotion, will, and morals. The composition of the heart frames your existence. Whether you're good or evil, whether you're godly or ungodly, whether you are fool or wise, no wonder in the day of judgment, the future, it is the heart that will be judged. Have you read that in the Bible? It is the heart that will be judged. It makes a lot of sense because the heart is who you really are. And because God can see through the hearts. For us, we judge wrongly because we look at the outside appearance just like in 1 Samuel 16, 7. For man, all of us, we look at the outside appearance, pogi, maganda, beautiful, but says God looks at the heart because even the heart is deceitful above all things, even us. So how do we know the heart? How do we know our heart so that we can guard it? From these regrets of life. Remember what Jesus said in Mark, Mark chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. From within, out of the person's heart, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit. Those scams, whatever, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these vile things come from within. So Jesus is saying, so if God can see our heart, but for us it's a problem, this is our dilemma, how do we know the heart? Jesus is saying, simple, whatever is going on inside the heart of a person reveals of what's going on outside his life. How do you know the heart of the person? Look at his life. Are there vile things or is he good? Now we know all of a sudden why the guarding of the heart is such a big deal. It's the biggest deal. We all understand it's so essential for us as believers, as parents, as moms and dads, as husband and wife, as pastors and koino leaders. These are the things that we protect our families and our loved ones from. These are the things that we protect ourselves from the regrets of life. Because you know what, mga kapatid, brothers and sisters? Because the heart is always under attack. Why do we need the guard? There is someone who always wants to attack. You can look around and see everywhere in the lives of the people. The Bible already warned us that we have an enemy. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8, very clear. Stay vigilant. You guard your heart vigilantly. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. What does he do? He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And who is this great enemy? And what is he going to do? If he wants to attack you, if he's going to take you out and destroy you, what will be his main target? What is it that he is going to uh, give the most damage in your life? He's going to attack your heart. Target, bullseye is the heart. You know? And the best example of this can be found in Acts chapter 5. What happened in Acts chapter 5? Are you familiar with the story of the Ananias and Sapphira tragedy? If you don't know, please read this at home. 
Okay, because there's one thing that Peter says, something that would give an insight to all of us about this. Sabi, you know, this Ananias and Sapphira, they are, they are the same, like they are the people who are in the church, who are serving, they are in the ministry of giving, they are in the, they, they, are, they are just like us. But what happened? What happened to them? The ending of the story is they, they drop dead. They drop dead because of what they have done. And Peter said to him, to Ananias, before they drop dead in Acts chapter 5, verse 3, there's an insight that would give us a clue. Then Peter said, Ananias, why have you let Satan fill your heart? How did that happen? You know, how did it happen? This person who wants to follow God just like us. The answer in this in that three-letter word, L-E-T. They let Satan in their hearts. They opened the gates wide. They did not put guardrails. Their heart allowed it. There are no guards, no security. So brothers and sisters, if we don't guard our hearts, if we don't pay attention, if we don't take this seriously, if you're not intentional, if you're not focused in guarding your heart, guess who's focused? Satan. Like a roaring lion, a great enemy. But fear not. There's a good news. After knowing this, Ananias and Sapira, namatay Sapira, sabi na. <laughs> After, I'm sure you will not let him in your hearts. Diba? You will do everything to guard your heart. But let me tell you, we want a well-guarded heart. I advise you to let someone who is much, much greater than Satan into your hearts. First John chapter 4, verse 4. Greater is he who is in me than Satan who is in the world. If Jesus is in the heart of that couple, I don't think Satan can come in, right? Because darkness cannot penetrate the light. Praise God. So, mga kapatid, Revelation says that Jesus was pictured out like knocking at the door of our hearts. Please let me in. Jesus is knocking at the door of our hearts. Please let me in. He wants, sabi, if someone opens the door, he will dine with us and live with us and give us this fulfilled life. A life of no regrets. So that's the secret. You let Jesus into your heart, Satan cannot go in. You will have a well-guarded, no regret life in Jesus with life everlasting. Amen? How to guard your heart? I assure you that when you let Jesus in, He will be the great protector of your heart. And the Holy Spirit will speak to you. He will live with you and He will teach you the ways how to protect your heart, how to guard our hearts. And there are ways. Let's continue on with our text. In verse 20, the Holy Spirit, if Jesus is in you, you can hear these words. The Holy Spirit will speak to you, my son. See, there's already that relationship. We are his children. My son, my daughter, pay attention to my words. Turn your ear to what I'm saying. Avoid all perverse talk. Stay away from the corrupt speech. So the way into your heart, there are entrance, there are gates. And the first one is the ear gate or the entrance. You protect your ear. The first area or entrance that we need to guard, that we should put gate closed whenever Satan comes in, that means there are stories that we shouldn't hear. There are podcasts and music that we should not listen to. Amen? There are jokes that should not be retold. There are names of God that should not be blasphemed and cursed. So we cover our ears from these things. And maybe you should say, so that means, itigil na po ang pakikinig kay Marites. Gossips, please just cover your ears. Buy those noise-canceling earphones whenever you, you hear those uh, Marites speaking. No, Because you might say, it's okay, Pastor. I'm living in an environment where all of this I can hear every day. It's surrounding me. But don't worry, Pastor. I'm, I'm not affected. I'm strong. Para lang sa mga may hinang nila lang yan. I don't believe. That's not true, mga kapatid. It will affect you and it will change your world. Remember the LSS, la, Last Song Syndrome, di ba? You cannot say it don't really affect me. I can hear this all day long. It will not affect me. No, it's not true. It will affect you because you hear those song, words, stories in your head. It keeps on repeating. That's the way our head, our heart works. So even if you're surrounded, you know, and it comes out, and this is the trick, it comes out like when you're driving and somebody cuts you in the highway. Then it comes out, Oy, then you're surprised. 
Where did that come from? Bakit bigla ako nagmura? Di ba? Hindi mo tinamaan yung gold. Uy, bigla kang nap- nako delikado. Yung pala, is already inside. Jesus said, it has already made into your heart. Nakapasok na pala. Luke chapter 6.45 says, The good person out of good treasure of his heart produces good, and evil person out of his evil treasure produces evil. Sabay-sabay po tayo. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. It's from the heart. When it comes out of your mouth, because it has already made into your heart, and it has made into your heart because you have failed to protect your ears. Nakapasok po. Nakapasok. Nakalusot si Satan. Nakasingit. Okay, so the next entrance to our heart is in verse 25. Guard your eyes as well, not just your ears. Sabi dito, let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your eyes on what lies before you. So careful po, di ba? It's the same for all. When, when you miss your eyes, do sa target, you will miss the goal. Though now, you notice how the writer of the Proverbs talk about the eyes. He said that in order to guard our heart, you need to look straight, don't look to the right, to the left. Now, why would he say that? Because he knows that the world we live in is filled with, with distractions. Right? Nako po sa bahay po namin talagang bingin-bingin na yung mga anak namin. Paulit-ulit kami na, please focus. Please, no distraction. Please focus, anak. The same for all of us, not just for children. That's why we need to watch what you watch. Can you tell your neighbor, please watch what you watch. <laughs> Those internet sites that you log in, please be careful. Be careful of what you read. The movies and the TV, the Netflix that you watch, please be careful. Parents, please be aware of what your kids are browsing. Please, we have to be the guardians of our children. Di pa po sila marunong magprotect ng heart nila. So we have to be the one to guard. If you need to put filters on their internet, internet sites, please do so. Check their browsing history. Watch the online games they're playing. Please guard their hearts by guarding their eyes. Okay. So it's not just the ears, it's the, not just the eyes, but we also need to guard our feet as well. Ponder the path of your feet, verse 26, then all your ways will be sure. No regrets. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Keep your foot, just one foot from evil. So the writer was saying, these are the things in your peripheral vision. You see things on your right, you see things on your left, and your feet takes you there. There's a progression to this, right? The writers, you also know that uh, he's saying that there are parties that you should not show up at, right? There are places that you must not go. Why? Because your heart is on the line. Your heart is at stake. You need to guard your feet in order to guard your heart. There's always this progression. Uh, nobody just woke up in this world and then pag wake up niya, murder na siya, nag-shoot na siya. No. What are you watching? You know, David Dow, before he committed, King David, before he committed adultery and murder, is nag-start daw yun sa ears. Narinig niya, uy, maganda yung asawa ng general niya. Okay, maganda. Nakapasok sa ears. Tapos, nanwalita ko, naliligo daw yan every gantong time. So, ayun na. The eyes and the feet followed. And every day, he is peeping. So, you know, the rest of the story, right? So, be careful to just guard your eyes, your ears, and your feet. So, where do you spend, where do you go and spend your, your time? How about you? What are your hobbies? Where do you give your talents or show your talents? These are your treasures, mga kapatid. And Jesus said, Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, For where your treasure is, there is your heart also. Right? The place where your feet goes to, the treasure, there your heart will be also. I heard one exhortation in the offering that says, If you want to know the person's heart, sabi niya, you want to know that person, hindi kita yung heart, no? Look at his monthly bills. Oh, ngayon, I could say, I could add to that exhortation. If you want to get to know the person, 
look at the history of his shopping cart, online shopping cart. Oh, <laughs> then you will know what that person's heart's treasure is. How about you, brothers and sisters? Kumusta po tayo? What is currently the treasure in our hearts? You know, mga kapatid, I realized this. When I was studying, no, it just dawned on me that the real issue pala, the real challenge, is not the guarding part of the heart. But to find out and to look for that kind of treasure to keep in our hearts that is worth guarding. Did, did you get me, mga kapatid? The issue is not the guarding, but the treasure to keep in our hearts that, that is worth guarding. If you find that treasure, the kind of treasure that will not be lost, that will not be stolen, a treasure that cannot be hacked, fish or scum, a treasure that will not lose its value, a treasure that no robber or master thief can steal, a treasure that no moth or any pest or any bacteria or germs can spoil, there is such a treasure, mga kapatid. In fact, I mentioned to you a man just now, like any one of us, he has been called by the Bible a man after God's own heart and was able to discover that the treasure and earn the title of man after God's own heart. Wow! And most of us already know him. No, he is King David, a man after God's own heart. Definitely not a perfect man. A while ago we talked about him being a daughter and a murderer, but also a sinner saved by grace, just like any of us. And he wrote this beautiful psalm to God that reveals he has found a worthy treasure I was talking about where it cannot be destroyed, that it is eternal. Psalm 119, verse 11, David said in a song, Your word I have treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you. Wow! See, this is the twist in our conversation, mga kapatid. The issue is not about the guarding, but it is what you treasure in your heart that keeps your heart well guarded. Let me repeat that. It is what you treasure in your heart that keeps your heart well guarded to avoid these regrets in life. And King David discovered that treasure. That treasure will keep his heart from sinning, from having regrets. It will protect him from the regrets of his life. And that is none other than God's word. The treasure of the heart. And this is a challenge for all of us. Guard your heart with God's word. This is now what we're doing. As we are having this conversation, we are guarding our heart with God's word. When you are listening to podcast sermons and when you read the Bible and your daily devotions, you are guarding your heart well. If you attend the LDP, you attend when your feet led you to the koinonia and deep dive on this book campaign that talks about expand, expound God's word, you are guarding your heart. That's it. That's the secret. That's the challenge, mga kapatid. To everything, when you wake up in the morning, you'll find out what's in your heart. What do you open in your phone? That is your treasure. So I challenge you, early in the morning, God's word first. God's word first. To keep our heart, to guard our heart. Praise God. Understanding that once we join this campaign, this journey, we know what to protect. That's our heart. And it is our goal to be like David, to be man after God's own heart.